Hello everyone and welcome back to the YouTube channel of Coding Ninjas. My name is Ankush and in this video we will discuss about one of my favorite topics which is competitive programming. So this video will be really helpful for uh, people who are starting their competitive programming journey or have been uh, doing competitive, pro competitive programming for 2-3 uh, months but feel stuck or they are not seeing any improvement, right? So uh, I've been doing competitive competitive programming for about two uh, two years now, right? So I'll just share some of my profiles, right? So here is my code share profile. So I'm rated 1980 on it and as you can see that i have done given my fair uh, share of contests and i have seen both ups and lows right so i have seen uh, my best rank at 207 i've also seen my worst rank i believe it was some 6000 right so i've been there right so uh and my at my code forces also i've given uh, various contests right as you can see my graph that you know what currently i'm specialist uh, at 1445 but i've seen lows and highs and everything right so and also in google start i was in the top five percentile so yeah i know where uh, I know my stuff when I talk about competitive programming. So this video will be really helpful for you. And we'll discuss in this video about how to practice problems, how to give contests, where to give contests. Right? So there are multiple sites like Code Studio, Code Forces, Lead Code, and even Code Chef. And all of these sites host uh, different types of contests. So we'll discuss about that. Then we'll also discuss about what to do after the contest. Right. So some tips around that. Right. So this video will be really helpful for you. So let's begin with the video. Okay, so let's first talk about one of the most essential parts of competitive programming, which is practicing. So uh, to improve in competitive programming, obviously you know that you need to practice a lot of problems. Right? And when I say a lot, I act genuinely mean a lot, right? So, but should you start start practicing random problems? So let's take an example for code forces, which is the most popular site to practice competitive programming uh, style problems. Right. So should you just start practicing random problems one by one? So as you can see that here, uh, basically code forces has a uh, difficulty rating assigned to a problem, right? Here it is 2600, here it is 1900, here it is 1100 and so on, right? So should you start practicing random problems? No, you should not do that, right? So first you know, what you need to do is, uh, you basically need to sort the problems to the easiest order and work your way up, right? And you need to find a comfort zone basically, that where is that, uh, where is that mark? Like below which part can I solve all the problems and up, uh, in which part am I having issues? So let's say for example that I am not able to solve any problem that is uh, greater than 1400 right so a problem that is rated 1400 i'm not able to solve and similarly for 1500 and so on right so your mind would say you know what just start practicing all the problems of 1400 1500 and so on right and why this technique might be correct it is the it is not the most optimal one what i would suggest is that you know that uh, 1400 is slightly out of your comfort zone right and so would be 1500 right so what i would say is you know what practice problems in the range slightly below your comfort zone and slightly above your comfort zone. So basically, if 1400 is that threshold point where you're not able to solve problems, right? So take like one step below and one step above. So that would be uh, basically 1300 and 1500. So practice the problems of these difficulty. Now, why is that? Right? So let's take an example of contest. In contest, it is not necessary that you will only receive problems of 1400 or only of 1500. You might receive of 1300 as well, right? So what this technique basically does is it improves your speed in these problems which you can already solve right because compete in, com in speed is a very important part of competitive programming so since you are also practicing problems one level below you are basically building your speed and at the same time because you are practicing slightly above your comfort zone as well you are also growing in terms of what knowledge and various techniques or you can call them algorithms whatever you want right you are also doing because you are also practicing problems slightly above your comfort zone right so this is my uh, tip to you that to practice problems find your threshold point basically that point from where onwards you are not able to solve the problems and then uh, basically take a range of uh, that threshold point minus 100 all the way to threshold point plus 100 and practice those problems and you will see over time maybe in a week or two weeks or even a month that your threshold point actually increases let's say uh, now you're able to solve problems of 1400 so now your threshold point is on 1500 so start practicing problems from 1400 to 1600 right so that's how you grow right so this method i have found that it is really effective for me 
right so uh, i actually was able to uh, improve my threshold point uh, every 2 to 3 weeks so and i i really believe that this can actually help you too right and other advantages of this that you are growing gradually right you are not uh, setting your bar bar too high that you feel overwhelmed and then you quit right because it's really easy to quit something that really takes a lot of effort so you are gradually growing you are gradually solving problems and you are building speed as well at the same time to the on the problems that you already know and uh, right so these are the two points basically that you're growing gradually and you're all building speed on the topics that you already know, right? So that's how I believe that you should practice problems. Hi there, before we proceed further in the video, I would like to inform you that Coding Ninjas has come up with a scholarship test called CNSAT. If you participate in this test, you can avail up to 100% scholarship on any course at Coding Ninjas. It can be TSA, web development, product company interview preparation, and even data science and many more courses. So if you want to participate, click on the link in the description below or the pinned comment and participate now. Happy learning guys. All right, so now that we have actually talked about practicing, right, you actually need to give contest as well, right? Because that is what competitive programming is all about. It is competing in a contest of programming, right? That's what competitive programming means. So you, there are a variety of platforms where you can participate in contests. The most common would be like Code Forces, Code Chef, Code Studio, and Lead Code, right? Now, all of these platforms, while hosting coding competitions or coding contests, are different from one another, right? So I would broadly categorize coding contests in two categories, right? So coding uh, contest can be of two types. One that is like primarily based on data structures and algorithms. And second, that is uh, like problem more based on problem solving and your observations and uh, maybe ad hoc algorithms as well. Right. So uh, if I talk about data structure and algorithm based, what I mean by that is that here you will actually see classical problems of uh, common data structures and algorithms but with a twist maybe the problem statement is different maybe constraints are a little different maybe there is an additional part to the problem right so basically uh, these type of uh, contests where which are primarily focused upon classical data structures and algorithms can be found on code studio and lead code right so as i said that they they are more inclined towards the common data structure and algorithms data structures like uh, trees binary trees graphs linked list or even array strings right? and algorithms like binary search uh, classical dp problems but with a twist right so you should really uh, be uh, down with your fundamental uh, fundamentals of data structure algorithms you should also uh, maybe know uh, various other data structures like hash maps heaps and etc right so you will find very similar problems as on the platform and in the contest as well right so you should be uh, down with your fundamentals uh, it's just that here uh, in addition to it there might be some additional part of the problem or there might be a variation of a classical problem that you might have already learned right so these type of contests are more focused on data structural algorithms and they can be found on code student lead code and one thing to note about these is that if your technical interviews are lined up basically for any company then it really makes sense to give, give this contest because it gives you a sense of time bound implementation right because uh, a contest has a timer uh, behind it so you would it, it would really help your preparation of technical interviews to give these dsa based contests on code studio and lead code right Okay, so let's now talk about the second type of problems, which are uh, based more based on like problem solving, right? So they would require a sense of common aptitude, right? Uh, you would need to make some observations or the problems might be even ad hoc, right? So ad hoc problems are basically that there is no specific solution, any general solution that fits the problem statement would work. And of obviously algorithms will come here as well, right? But it would be more subtle algorithms that uh, you actually first need to break down your problem statement and then you need to see that what is the problem right so basically in these contests they are actually different from the ones we discussed earlier because here what you need to do is first you need to break the problem statement and you actually need to know what is the problem actually asking for you what is your end goal for this problem and then uh, a lot of it around uh, revolves around making observations now you can make a lot of observations in these problems sometimes there are some observations you can make from the problem statement sometimes from some the sample test cases that are given to you sometimes you need to write your own test cases sometimes even constraints right you need to observe constraints and tell you a lot about the algorithm or the way of thinking that you need to use right so if let's let's say if the size let's say it's an array problem and the size of array is very really small so you really don't need to worry about the time complexity even a word solution would work right because 
in this uh, in like competitive programming your main agenda is to solve the problem before anyone else right speed plays a really important time as we discussed in the practice section so uh, making observations from constraint or problem statement or test cases sample test cases or making your own test cases is really important in uh, contest uh, that are held on code chef and code forces which i said are more based on problem solving observations and ad hoc or even algorithms right so these type of contests are found here right and uh, one side note is uh, that you should also know the standard template library of the language of your choice because sometimes the uh, you might need to uh, use them and you won't uh, sit there and start implementing your own library right so uh, knowing the HTML of your language of your choice would also really come handy and even more than that that sometimes the problems that are present in uh, contests of code chef or code forces is that they might not even need any data structure they might be simply based on some observations or basic mathematics and i have seen a lot of problems where you are just scratching with your head that what algorithm can i use here and then you find out that hey you need to you just needed to make some observations and then it was just simple mathematics so knowing that and practicing that can also be really helpful on contests that are held on these sort of platforms right so these were about the second type of uh, coding contests and like a lot of students ask me that hey so what should be my frequency so i would say that you know what you should try to give two to three contests per week right why is that you should not try to give a contest every day because uh, that doesn't even make any sense you would get really tired very soon and you would feel exhausted and you would just give up neither you should go for like just one contest a week why because then it won't tell you or won't give you enough data points to see where you are lagging or what is your threshold point as we saw in the practice uh, section so i think uh, two, two to three contests per week is a really good point uh, where you get enough data points to see where you are lagging or where you need to make improvements as well as you don't get very uh, tired or burnt out uh, while giving contests because minded giving contest is uh, actual work it is very taxing on your mind and your physical health as well so try to give two to three contests per week that should be good enough so now you know where to give contest basically right you know different platforms so what to do after you have given the contest right that's where absolving comes so absolving basically means so let's say in the a contest you were able to solve only two problems right you were able to solve the first two problems so try solving the third problem again right with a fresh mind with a newer perspective right so you know what uh let's say you gave a contest uh today try solving the problem that you were not able to solve next day right but with a fresh mind right and if you're still not able to solve it there's no reason to worry read the editorial now what happens at these uh, competitive programming sites is that uh, you will have a approach uh, a text based editorial where the approach will be explained and then you will have the uh, implementation of that approach in form of code right so what i'm suggesting is if you're initially not able to solve the problem just read the editorial and don't look at the code and try implementing the approach that the editorialist has discussed right so and this will really help improve your implementation skills right so and if you're still not able to implement it still there is no reason to worry about trust me it happens to everyone right I, even in my case i was many able uh, many times after reading the editorial i was still not able to implement it so you know what after if this happens to you then see the code right and now you need to ask yourself three questions is there some algorithm that is being used that I did not know? Is there some data structure being used that I did not know? Or did I forget some base case or corner case, right? So asking these three questions is really important because that's how you will know where you uh, fall short of the problem and where you need to improve yourself, right? So it gives you the data points that I uh, talked about while giving contest, right? That where is your shortfall? Where do you need to improve yourself, right? So that's what absolving helps that it gives you that what you need to improve upon and it helps you uh, bettering your implementation skills and helps you learn something new, right? So do absolve after you give the contest. So now to summarize everything, competitive programming is all about practicing problem, competing in contests and then absolving those contests to improve and to grow, right? So I hope you found this video really helpful. If you liked it, do like this video, do share it with your friends, do comment down below if you have any doubts or you want to ask something to me, right? I'll definitely reply there and do subscribe to the YouTube channel of Coding Ninjas. My name is Ankush and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Hi there. We hope you liked the video and had fun learning. I would like to inform you that Coding Ninjas has come up with a scholarship test called CNSAT.
If you participate in this test, you can get up to 100% scholarship on any course at Coding Ninjas. It can be DSA, web development, product companies, interview preparation, and even data science and many more courses. So if you want to avail this opportunity, click on the link in the description below or the pinned comment and participate in the test now. Happy learning, guys.